Hey guys. Okay, so before we talk about pages 8, and eight 9, and 10, let's recap. If I have a set of data and I add a value to each of those data, each pieces of data, we are going to literally take the values and shift it when it comes to our mean. So here we took the mean, we added the same number to each of the um, each of the values, and we notice all of the new means were affected by whatever the horizontal shift was. Let's look at that as the y-intercept using the int y equals mx plus b ideology. Our standard deviation, though, remember, standard deviation starts here. We take it. All the values just shift it over slightly. Okay, next, we take those same values, find the mean, and we multiply them by something. Okay, think of those as the idea, again, of the slope, the y equals mx plus b. My new mean value is going to be whatever the multiple is of the multiplier is, which in this case, 615 and 1 half. Okay, the new mean value will be um, affected by a multiple of whatever the slope is. And so will the standard deviation. Here we came up with our equations to um, represent that. But also, here we didn't discuss this. The equation for the standard deviation is here. But remember, this is the equation for the variance. So we're squaring the slope. And of course, the variance is nothing but the square of the standard deviation anyway. And that will give us our new one. I want to discuss that more on Monday. Okay, now here we're talking about what happens when we do, when we have to add something to it and then multiply. Now remember, we took the, um, the, the average of the information. And when we multiply by 5, it got fatter. When we add 10, it shifted. Well, that means that our mean value in this case is going to be exactly what we just said, following the idea of order of operations. We're going to just take the value, multiply it by 5, and then shift everything over 10. And we put this in the calculator as we play with our numbers. Our standard deviation, just like before, it only got fatter because as it got fatter, then it shifted over, which means that our standard deviation is only going to be affected by the slope, by the multiplier. It's not going to be affected by um, the horizontal because the horizontal, it moves from one over to the other. But in this particular case, what happens? We are going to take each piece of data, add 10 to it, and then we're going to multiply it by 5. So with that being said, that's saying here that we took each of, each of the pieces of data that we had before, right here, we add 5 to it, and then after we added 5 to it, we multiplied it by 10. So when you think about it mathematically, the standard deviation did not shift when I added the 10, okay, but when I multiplied the values by 5, again by the slope, it had the same result. So in other, the difference between these two right here are as follows. The means change in the same way, but the standard deviation changes by its multipl multiplier. And remember, we've talked about this, but adding or subtracting an amount to each of the values does not change the standard deviation. With that being said, here are the formulas, and here are the results of the formulas. So now, let's pause. I want you guys to go ahead and find um, the, the mean the standard deviation and the variance for both x and y. Then I want you to do all of what it says right here. Find the, the mean standard deviation variance, add them together, subtract them from one another, and let's see what happens. So pause for now. Okay, so guys, it looks like to me when I had mu of x plus 
y. That's nothing but equal to mu of x plus mu of y. That's all that happened. Look at 4 plus 16 equals 20. Also, it looks like to me the mu of x minus y was nothing but mu of x minus mu of y. Well, let's look at this. 4 minus 16 is 12. And go ahead and confirm that with the rest of them. Now we're on page 10. See what happens to the variances. And when you look at the variance, what happened was it was the same. You just added together the variance of x and the variance of y. And that equals to the variance of x sub given um, x plus y. And what happens? Subtraction is the same thing. So again, focus on the variances. Here is your x. Here is your y. We add them, we get this score. We subtract them, we get that score. I had to change that, guys. So, And actually, nope, that's not true. Because remember, variance is the distance. So if I am subtracting them, from each other, they are still equal distance apart. So, as I had before, it is 6.67, but I wanted to show you because I know some of you guys have 5.3. And I'll be honest, I got caught for a second because I had it there, then I changed it, and went, uh-oh, okay, the value is going to be the same regardless. So let's make a note of that. Because remember, standard deviation which is the same as variance, measures range, and range is distance. Okay, so making a note of that. And when you put it in your calculator, you're going to find we got the exact same value. So literally put it in your calculator and let the calculator do the math for you. Okay, so with that being said, going back here, when you have this right here, it's going to be plus. When you have that, it is also going to be plus because of the rationale I just said to you. Now, I've said to you over and over again, in order to get standard deviation, you have to go through the variance. So, do the standard deviation follow the same rules as the variance in Part E? What do you think? The answer is going to be no. And the reason is because x squared plus y squared, there's your math people, does not equal x plus y. So, to find the standard deviation, you must do the variance first. Okay, so now, let's look, just look at the x values. And here, as we look at the x values, you've already got that in your L1, hopefully. Let's go ahead and do what it says down here. We've already have the mean, um, standard deviation, and variance. Now, we've got the mean, standard deviation, and variance, as I said. And like we did before, when you have a, what's equivalent to a slope, your new mean is going to be affected by a multiplier of whatever the value of slope is, which is 8. And here, your standard deviation is going to be affected by that also, which is 4.9. Now, you put this into the calculator. When you put it into the calculator, like I said, you got the 8 for the mean. Um, you know it's going to be um, a multiply by the, um, the value of the slope. And remember, we talked about you take the value of the slope here, you square it, and then you multiply it by the, um, the standard, by the variance that was established before. So this is an arrow, terrible arrow. But that's where that comes from, that 24. Now, if you... You've already got this in your calculator. You understand how this is the same because this is the same as mu sub x 
plus mu sub x. But now here, the idea of the variance and the standard deviation, looking at the variance first, remember this is the standard deviation, I'm sorry, the variance of, of one and the variance of the other. Because remember, that wasn't an exact six. That was a 5.997, something like that. I forgot what it was. Okay, but when you add those two together, you get this value here. Okay, and in order to get the, go back for the standard deviation, you're going to be taking the square root of 11.97. So the idea, we're not, it's not following tr the um, mathematical standards or what we're used to seeing that x equals 2x, but when it comes to the idea of this, the answer is no because of what the idea of standard deviation and variance does. It is the range of scores. So for that reason, because this is a multiplier, makes it fatter or skinnier, fatter in this case, here, this is a shifter, okay? And in this particular case, all we're doing is adding one average and then adding another. They are not equal when it comes to variances. So, as I was saying, here, you multiply it by 2, you get an 8. You add the two of them together, you just happen to get an 8. But when you look at the variance, here remember you're going to be taking the slope and then squaring it and then times the, times the variance. But in this case, it's just going to be the 6 plus the 6 to give you the 12. Now I'm going to stop right here, and we're going to be talking about these rules a lot more. If you want to keep, you know what, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to finish this off and write the rest, and then we'll be talking about it more in class tomorrow. So here are the rules with the numbers plugged in, but for the sake of consistency, you really might like this to have the square root of 2 squared times the variance squared, which means that it's going to be 2 squared, then 4.5 squared, and then of course the square root of that, which gives you 4.9. And I know your thoughts are, well, why should we do that? Consistency, nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, here are the rules. For the mean, just like it was before, we just add them together. But for the variance and standard deviation, and the last question, in the random world, does x plus x equal 2x? And the answer is no. x plus x does not equal 2x because the phrase was in the random world. Because we get two different outcomes. Okay, so tomorrow we'll be recapping this and also doing word problems in, a, in relationship to this. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.